Hello, in this video I will cover critical points and how to use them to figure out a local, global, minimum, and maximum, mathematically. Okay, let's start with critical point. Critical point is whenever your derivative is equal to zero or your derivative is undefined. To show what it really means, let's pick a function. Let's call f of x equals to one third x cubed minus three three x squared plus five x. As a graph, this function looks something like here. Let's have it x and y axis. If you actually graph this function, it would look something like that. It's a rough sketch but you should get the idea. And where derivatives equals to zero or slope of a function is zero, we have it over here at this point and at this point. These two points, functions equals to, uh, derivative of the function equals to zero. Therefore, this is our critical point. Okay, but now let's do it mathematically. Uh, we have to take derivative of a function. So f prime of x, would be, we just use basic power rule, so it's um, x squared minus 6x plus 5. And if you want to calculate the critical point, we, all you have to do is just set this whole thing equals to 0. Um, then you can basically factor uh, this function over. So you have x minus 5 and x minus 1 equals to 0. And as you can see, this function will be equals to 0 only if x equals to 1 or x equals to 5. This is a mathematical way to say it. at this point x equals 1 and at this point x equals 5. Okay, this is basically the definition of derivative when it's uh, equals to zero. Uh, I just want, quickly want to show you what it means for it to be uh, undefined. So let's pick a function. Let's call f and say it's just f prime of x right away, so we don't have to take a derivative. f prime of x equals to something like x minus x minus one. Let's say x minus three divided by x minus 2. And as you can see, if x equals to 2, this function would be undefined. Therefore, um, we have actually three po critical points. x as 1, x as equals to 3, and x equals to 2. This is basically what it's talking about when it talks about undefined. Uh, our derivative would be equal to something like that. Now let's talk more about local, global, minimum, and maximum. To say that C is global maximum is to say that the point C is greater than any other x, greater or equal to. Um, while to say local uh, C is the local max, to say that uh, C is greater to points near C. So, let's draw another graph. Let's say we have a function something like that. It's again, x, y, and looks something like that similar to what we had before, but I'm just going to do something like that and just end over there. So, so now, let's say we take this point over here. This is our local maximum. If uh, we go a little bit to the right of this function, you can see that it decreases. And if we go a little bit to the left, it also decreases. So, if we go any way from this point, this would be uh, slightly smaller. Therefore, C is local maximum. But then again, uh, at this point, let's say, it's also local and, in fact, global maximum. Because at this point, it's greater than any point in this whole function. And at the same time, it's greater than uh, points nearby. Like, let's say, just points around here. Um, therefore, this is uh, global maximum. 
and local as well. Um, in minimum, you can see that this is our local minimum over here. But actually, if this function continues to extend, we don't have a global minimum. Um, because it just keeps going infinite to negative infinity. Another thing I want to point out, let's say our function, instead of going from negative infinity to infinity, it goes, it has a boundary. So let's say it starts uh, somewhere around here and ends, let's say, somewhere around here. Actually, this is going to be like that. So basically, what it means, our um, f of x is somewhere between point a, so it's it's greater than a, and it's uh, less than or equal to b. Let's call this point a over here. This point is b. And as you can see, it's a exclusive and b inclusive. That our function f of x is somewhere between b, a and b, where b is exclusive and a is inclusive. And let's call this a and this b. Also just wanted to point out that um, might be slightly wrong notation. And I do not mean that uh, value of functions between a and b. I just saying that this function ranges somewhere between a and b. Let's say we're looking for global maximum. So now we need to look at all local maximums, which is here, and endpoints. So endpoints is at B would be somewhere around here. And at A, we see, like, we, it hasn't actually reached this point, but limit of this point would be here. So, but it works slightly different. So you can see that uh, if you compare values at uh, this point, let's call it C again, and compare it to B, B is greater than C. Therefore, B would be lo uh, global maximum. It works similar for minimum, except for minimum, you can see that this actually point is smaller than this point. Therefore, um, at this, I'll call it C prime, let's say. At C prime, um, this would be a global minimum. But let's say if we had a, our boundaries extended and our boundary would go somewhere here. You can see that in this case, this would be somewhere here. But because it does not include this point, we would actually not have a global um, minimum. Let's come back to our old function. Um, and let's say they're asking, someone asking us this question, um, to find all critical points and tell whether it's minimum or maximum. How would we go about doing that mathematically? So what do we want to do? We want to find zeros again. Take derivative, set it equals to zero. And as you remember, we had x equals to 5 and x equals to 1, two points, right? So the typical way I do it, I just like to draw a straight line and then mark off 1 and 5. Now we want to figure out uh, whether slope to left of 1 is negative or positive, because if at 1 and 5, the slopes are 0. The good numbers to pick sometimes uh, is 0 and maybe negative 1,000, whatever you want to pick. And you want to plug those numbers back into your derivative equation. So let's say we pick x equals to 0. So we have x squared would be 0, minus 6 times 0 would be 0 again, plus 5. So we can see to left of x, the slope would be positive. So you put a plus here. Uh, then we want to do the same thing between 1 and 5. Between 1 and 5, there's no nice numbers, so let's just pick numbers somewhere in between 3, let's say. So 3 squared would be 9 minus 18 plus 5. So 14 minus 18 is going to be negative 4. You can see that this is, is negative. Slope here is negative. Then we want to pick, like, high number, let's say, pick a million. Million squared will outweigh pretty much any numbers here. So once again, this is going to be a positive. But this is a positive. 